all the islands. Yes, thank you, sorry. Um, with that, just to let you know, we are gonna be recording this. Um, so that way you folks have a record of this and you can go back at a, a later time to, um, to watch again in case you'd like to watch it. Um, with that, and we also have one of our colleagues, JB Friday. He's not an instructor today, but he's calling in. Um, he is one of our colleagues, one of our main scientists for our Rapid Ohio Death Project. Um, and he is an extension forester with the University of Hawaii as well. Um, so we're all employed by the University of Hawaii to some respect. Um, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Hoku and she will be um, talking about uh, some of the Zoom details, the platform that we're actually gonna be on today and how to utilize it and things like that if you're unfamiliar with that. So Hoku. So aloha mai kako, mahalo nui everybody for, um, for joining us today. So thank you Amber for the introductions and um, yeah, so, this is our second lay making workshop. So just some um, housekeeping things to just go over before we kind of move into the workshop itself. Amber and Kim are gonna give a bit of background um, of as far as the materials lay making and then um, Rapid Ohia death and Ohia itself. Um, while that's going on and while we're engaging with each other, we ask everybody if to um, just put their, um, put themselves on mute so that we don't have any reverb or background noise. Also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to use the chat box. I will be in the background monitoring those so I can make sure that those questions get asked. Um, so when we do have some downtime, perhaps we can start engaging in, if you wanted to ask a question, just uh, um, unmute yourself and ask while we're making lay. Uh, we will be conducting our, um, our Zoom polls live during our um, workshop. So we ask that you um, respond to those polls. And then we'll also be introducing our workshop survey to you folks during our, um, dur closer to the end of our workshop so that you guys can start kind of um, responding to the surveys that we're sending out to everyone and providing feedback to our workshop. Um, uh, some other things to think about. I'm trying to think off the top of my head what we had covered. So organizing all of your plants. So um, Amber will go through that. And then um, Kim will present her presentation. Is there anything else? I feel like I'm forgetting something that- um, um, I think we're not, gonna, we're not gonna have a break for bathroom break. Thank so you. That's, that was it, yes. <laughs> a clip will come in or a piece of tape or something to kind of hold your place in case you wanna use the restroom. So feel free to break at any time. Um, Yes, like Hoku mentioned, please, uh, at the end, yeah. we will have a survey link in the chat box. Um, so and another thing, if you folks are not or unfamiliar with Zoom, um, your chat box will be found on the bottom part of your screen. So if you hover down to the bottom, right near the center, you should see a box that says chat. If you click on that, um, <laughs> yes, Panay, that, yes, that, there you go. <laughs> That's the word for the leaf of the burn. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> um, there should be a... a there's already a comment in there from JB, but if, uh, if we're gonna get started with the chat box. And so if you folks want to, um, we're gonna have you guys practice this. So we make sure everybody has a, a way to contact us or, or to ask questions. Um, so in the chat box, if everybody could please put where you are chiming in from. So I'm gonna put in Kaimaki, Oahu. So that's where I'm trying to Oh, hopefully from Hilo. So if you folks could chime in in the chat box, where you're calling in from. We like to see um, where everyone's calling in from. Virginia, wow, welcome, Emily. Whoa. Hey, Kathy from Aleva, Kala Hill, Hawaii Kai, Kapa'a, Kikaha, California. Welcome, welcome. Hawaii, this is so neat. Yeah. Before we were this in person, we, we don't get the turnout like this. Um, you know, the- Irvine, um, California. <laughs> California, welcome, welcome. Well, my sister's That's going to school in Irvine right now for nursing. Nice, great. So, okay, so we know it works. So yay. another, oh, Colorado, yay. Welcome everyone. This is amazing. I'm glad we get to, so I, yeah, so sorry for saying good morning, but it's good morning here in Hawaii <laughs> for us and it's Friday. So happy Aloha Friday. Great. 
So one more thing, um, I guess, before we get started. So now we know the chat box works. So you feel free to either um, put a question in there if you have a question, if you want to free your hands. And if you don't want to free your hands, you can always press the, um, the unmute. Um, and that's going to be found on your bottom bar as well to the left hand side. You can just mute or unmute and then you can ask your question that way if you have a question. Um, with that, um, I know a few people chimed in since I mentioned it, but what we want to get started with, let me um, see if I can spotlight myself. No. Do you want me to spotlight your phone? Um, my hand, actually. I'm going to just go through that really quickly again one more time. I can do that. Thank you. All right, you are spotlighted. So we're so now I'm spotlighted so you can see it in a larger format. So like I mentioned, for those who um, just chimed in, um, we want to get started with our uh, prepping of the material before um, before we actually start the workshop. So we did put some videos online. If you didn't get a chance to do it yet because you just picked it this morning, no problem. Um, we want to target about between two to four inches, three to four inches. You're going to um, uh, whether it's a piece of fern like I'm doing or whether it's um, like I, I really got lucky a gardenia that's about three, you know, two and a half, three inches and I'm going to put in there. Um, I have some roses that I might use so I prep them to be about three inches. So you want to prep all of these. Um, let me admit one person we're going to prep for three to four inches long and get them ready to to wind. Um, so you're going to have that uh, ready and handy. What you want to also get ready and handy is maybe might come in handy is a, a clip, a chip clip. And this is in case you want to take a break because your hands will be cramping. So in case you want a chip clip, you're going to clip it off, take a little break, let your hands rest and then continue. Okay, so you might need a chip clip or some sort of clip. Um, you might need scissors. Um, in case to cut anything or uh, or uh, or at the end just to, to cut anything so you um, to cut the ends off you're going to need a scissors. Um, at the end we're going to talk about care tips, but maybe a little water bottle or if you don't have a water bottle um, handy, um, you can always run it under the water we'll talk more about that so that might come in handy. So also getting on to what type of um, cordage. Uh, material you're going to be utilizing today. I'm going to be utilizing raffia, which is a uh, which is this. Um, you could utilize jute cord. You can utilize uh, yarn, uh, shoestrings. Um, we've seen people use plastic bags. I mean, we've seen a bunch of really cool things that people um, would masking tape work to hold it during a break. Yeah, masking tape would work to hold it during a break. Exactly. You could take it to your tape it to your desk as well. No problem. So today with the raffia. Um, what you want to do uh, and how we're going to measure it is we're going to make what's called a coupe, which is, and that's actually, um, it's, it's actually a length. And that length is actually almost the size of your forearm. So if I, if my hand was longer, it's almost the size of your forearm. Let me see. There we go. So that's going to be the, about the, the length you're going to have it. And so you're going to want to make sure that's about, you know, eight inches, eight, 10 inches, maybe depending how long your arm is, six to 10 inches. And then you're gonna leave about a good, you know, eight inches at the end of each side. So that's how long you kind of measure it. So that's about, what is that? Eight and you know, about 24 inches or so, at least long. Um, I like to make mine a little longer just in case I change my mind and I wanna make a longer lay or um, just sometimes it's good to have extra material at the end instead of cutting it so short. Um, and I'll show you why. So you wanna make sure you have three pieces that are at least you know 20 inches or so, um, or maybe longer. I Mine, it already comes this long in the box, I mean, in the bag. So I'm, I'm gonna just utilize that as my piece. I'm not gonna cut it any smaller. So you're gonna have, you need three pieces to start the actual um, backbone of the lay. And then you're going to need some extra pieces some extra long pieces to wrap and use as your cordage. So just cut a few more wraps, like maybe another three or so, two or three um, 20 inch long uh, uh, wraps or just pieces of raffia. That's going to be your wrapper. So you're going to want to get that ready too. So um, with that, are there any questions? Okay, so somebody had asked, um, one question was, you know, uh, if, if they don't have a chip clip, uh, if a piece of tape would work um, to hold it. Yes, a piece of tape would work. You could tape it really well to your desk. Someone was saying they could tape it to their desk or something. You could do that as well or tape it off. 
Um, yes, I had prepped. I was making a lay for somebody and I went to the um, store and I can show you folks the type of materials I have, but um, I did go to the store and uh, I'm using spray roses. And with these, their they're stems are really fragile. So I did prep them with a piece of wire and some tape. Um, this is not biodegradable. So um, I normally don't do unbiodegradable materials, but this one I have to do with this type of material. Um, so it's just the more you utilize different materials, the more you're going to learn how to use them. So that's how I prep these um, roses today. Um, so with that, before we get into everything else in the plants, I'm going to hand it over to, to Kim. I will be using gift wrap paper for leaves and yarn for tying. Yes, that's totally okay. Great. You can so you can use alternatives and we'll talk about using alternatives. So you can definitely use paper, you can use ribbon, you can use fabric, um, anything like that. Uh, someone used paper towels our last week Friday. Uh, so, you know, you definitely can um, utilize anything. We'll talk more about that when I talk about the plants. So for now, I'm going to hand it over to Kim and we're going to go over the importance of Ohia and learning about rod and things like that before we get started. And we're going to give you folks a chance to prep your materials while you listen. Hang on one second while I unmute myself. There we go. Yeah, everything just goes all uh, jumble whenever you share screen. So welcome to our OHIA free laymaking workshop. Um, I would love to know those of you, we're gonna go back to that chat box, if you will. So while you're preparing your materials and getting ready, um, I'd love to know how many of you have attended one of our laymaking workshops before. So if you will drop in the chat box, then if this is your first one, then write drop in one. If you've attended uh, others, Tell us the total that you've attended. I'd love to see how many we have that are maybe their first time here and maybe some of our returnees. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Ohia and Rapid Ohia death. First though, I'd just like to make sure everybody's aware that uh, when we talk about Ohia and saving Ohia across the state, there's just a whole group of people that are in support of doing this work. And you may not see it because, um, you know, the work of Saving Ohia is really happening in our forests. But just so you know, there's statewide working group that's made up of government, NGOs, nonprofits, um, researchers, foresters, and outreach personnel. It's a large group of people that are uh, focusing on Ohia and focusing on this threat known as rapid Ohia death. Um, before I talk about Rapid Ohia death, I just want to give a little bit of background about Ohia um, and why it's so important and why we have this large working group of people um, working behind it. Ohia is endemic to Hawaii and by endemic we mean found here and nowhere else in the world. Uh, we think its closest relative might be Pahutakawa that comes from Aotearoa or New Zealand. Um, it is highly variable or adaptable. It can grow in all of our microclimates around the state from low elevation, kind of coastal areas, all the way up to 9,000 feet mountaintop areas. Um, dry sides of the island, rainforests, uh, that is what makes Ohia our most abundant tree in our native forest. It's also known as a keystone species. And by that, we mean it is a host or a home to many other flora and fauna. So there are forest birds and native insects that rely on and native um, snails that rely on Nohia for some form of their life history requirements, whether it be for home, shelter protection, or food in the form of nectar or insects that are living on the tree. Um, so it's highly adaptable, it provides a home, and it is known as a keystone species. And what that also means is if Ohia were to go extinct, 
all of these species that I just kind of rambled off, tree snails, seabirds, forest birds, insects, um, might also go away. So if we lose ohia, we stand to lose a whole lot of other species as well. Uh, I like to talk about ohia as their importance in four different ways. So I just did pretty much talk about shelter and food, the one in the middle on this slide. But ohia is also super important to our watersheds and um, in that photo on the left and on the photo on the right as well, a key cultural component um, for our native Hawaiian culture around the state. So as you can see here in this photo, um, ohia do thrive in our rainforests atop our mountains. Um, and ohia, um, ohi, the word, can be defined as to gather or to collect. And this is a perfect example of what ohia is doing in our forest, kind of helping pull moisture from the air. And a healthy ohia forest is composed of a tall canopy of trees, of which ohia may be one. Uh, it also tends to have an understory and as well ground cover. It might have lichen and mosses and even ferns growing on ohia. So a healthy ohia forest is full of biodiversity. It is just super lush. And because of that biodiversity and that lushness, it is able to hold moisture as well in place. So we like to say a healthy ohia forest is like a sponge. It helps hold moisture in place. And by doing that, it helps prevent erosion and it helps um, replenish our aquifers. So the water that some of us will probably be drinking throughout the time that we are together, um, you know, in a sense, we can thank Ohia for that. And the third component I like to talk about with Ohia's importance is related to our host culture here in Hawaii. Um, Ohia has a lot of historical and current practices today that we see exhibited in Olelo, Oli, and Meli. So song, chant, story. Ohia is also closely related to hula, um, lay making. And at one time, the wood was used for various and a sundry of different purposes, but building hale, heiau, even on va'a, the canoes, um, as well as carving statuary or figures like ki'i. Um, so just a variety of like really everyday uses um, Ohia was once used for. So that's just a little background on why we feel Ohia is important. Again, the three kind of areas, you know, the watershed, the culture, as well as the ecosystem. You know, a forest is an ecosystem. So we, we need to re be thinking about, you know, our ecosystem up at the tops of our mountains here. Um, so that leads me to this threat that is known as rapid Ohia death. Um, and this is a photo from a helicopter. And these are the classic symptoms that we see of uh, what we would call a symptomatic rod tree. And what we're looking for are trees that have reddish brown canopy. So the leaves have all turned brown. Uh, they start to drop the leaves eventually and you see this fine branching like you see in this photo. So this is a classic uh, symptomatic tree. Um, just to show you the potential of this disease, this is a photo that was taken on Big Island, I'm told in the Puna district, um, a nice, lush, beautiful Ohia forest. And a short 10 years later, that same forest looked like this, which is pretty devastating, pretty impactful. Um, I always like to point out when I share these two slides that this is not what every forest that has rabbit Ohia death in it looks like. All the forests, the impact of rod varies across the islands, depending on many uh, different things like climate, elevation, and just the sheer number of ohia that might be found in that area. Um, there's many things we're learning that are impacting the distribution of rod throughout a forest. But this is the most extreme. It could be, you know, like 90% of the trees that are lost. In other forests, it might only be the loss of 10% of ohia. But this is unfortunately the drastic potential. Um, so what is, when we talk about rapid ohia death, this disease? Basically, it's a fungus. And there's actually two fungal species. Um, and you don't see it on the exterior of the tree. You don't see it growing on the leaf. You don't see it growing on the exterior of the, the bark. You don't see it on the flower. 
Um, it grows inside the tree in what's known as the vascular system of the tree. And basically it is choking the tree of any movement of water. So the tree is dehydrating, which I find super ironic. A tree that is bringing water to us is dying because it is dehydrating and not getting enough water where it needs it. So the fungus grows inside. The only way a tree can get infected, and this is super important to remember, is through a wound in the tree. So a broken branch, either that's been cut off or pruned or one that's been snapped in a high wind, or even we're learning roots and lower bark that has been roughed up from either boots walking over it or wild animals in the forest. Um, so it's known as a wound pathology. And here we see a photo that I think JB may have taken. And um, the point of this photo is two things, actually. You can have a tree on the right that has died of, of this disease. Um, and as long as the tree on the left is perfectly healthy and intact, has no wounds, it can continue to sur survive and it will survive. However, um, it could also be that this tree um, standing on the left may be infected, but has not started to show external visual symptoms yet. So um, just something to keep in mind when you see healthy ohia tree, keep your eye on them. If you have a favorite trail that you hike and a favorite ohia tree, check on it, visit your friends, um, see how they're doing. And if you see the sudden churning of the leaves from what looks like healthy on the left to reddish brown in a matter of weeks, um, we want to know that. That is a visual symptom of this disease. A little bit more on how it spreads. It's a little complicated and it can happen both naturally and by humans. So that's what makes this fungus super tricky. Um, once a tree dies, there's tiny little ambrosia beetles that play a part in this, um, the, the distribution of this disease. These beetles are so tiny, you can hardly see them with the naked eye. In fact, if you think about this, if you pull out a coin out of your, you know, your purse or your pocket, and you've got a dime, a 10 cent dime, if you look at the president's head on the one side and you zero in on the size of his ear, that's about the size of one of these beetles. So they're super tiny, they burrow into the tree, they burrow into the tree right where the fungus is growing. And by doing that, they then can release potentially the fungus into the environment. And once the fungus is released into the environment, these teeny tiny microscopic fungal pathogens, they can either get blown in the wind to a nearby tree that has a wound and infect it, or that fungal pathogen can drop to the ground and it carries, can be carried around the island in mud. So be that mud on the bottom of our shoes or on truck tires or motorcycle tires or potentially even animals. Um, and so what we like to say is that the best way we can help Ohia, there's no one way, there's a myriad of ways, but we've sort of picked five. And one, the first one is avoid injuring Ohia. Uh, if you're in the forest or even in your backyard, if you have Ohia that you want to protect, um, don't move ohia wood or ohia parts or even soil near ohia from one part of the island to another and particularly don't transport inter-island. Um, and always, and this is good for preventing the spread of rapid ohia death as well as a whole host of other invasive species, always clean your gear and your tools as, including your shoes, possibly clothes that may have mud on them. Um, before and after entering the forest. If you can wash them in high heat and dry them on high heat as well, that's better because heat in, a, in excess of 140 degrees Fahrenheit will kill the fungal pathogen. And also wash your vehicles. Um, and that includes getting underneath the bumpers to get as much mud off as possible. All those secret places that mud may be moving around the island. And lastly, um, the thing you can do to help save Ohia is to report suspect trees. So like I said earlier, if you're out in the forest, you have a favorite tree, keep an eye on it. You know, maybe take a, a snap a photo of it. 
with your iPhone. And now you'll have a historical record of it. Like if you go out once a month, take a photo of the same tree. And then all of a sudden, if you start to see its health changing, we, you know, we can look at that history and see, all right, what's happened to this tree? And then we can go in and sample it and confirm whether or not it has this disease. And then the very last thing that I like to say um, that we can do to help Ohia is super simple. And that's love Ohia. So that is, uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer because I gave you the condensed version and I was talking really quickly, I realized that. Um, feel free to ask them, unmute yourself or drop them in the chat. And I'm just scrolling through the chat now and I'm so excited to see that we have a lot of first time and or second time lay makers with us today. So we're spreading um, the joy of making lay in community and that's wonderful. Yes, and I wanted to, um, Kim, if you could share your screen one more time, I wanted to just show them some alternatives. So part of the reason why we choose to do things OHIA free um, in our workshops is because we as a concerted group of scientists um, see the, um, the potential of what could happen. Um, you know, although Kim mentioned that the disease and the pathogen is not found in the seeds and the leaves and the stems that may be correct and that's you know obviously fine for laymakers but um it's the act of going through the forest and creating little wounds as you pick the ohia that could be acceptable to getting the disease and so that's why we choose to make things ohia what we're trying to do is utilize alternatives to ohia okay so in this picture you can see the redness and that people love from ohia to use in lay and the reason why people use them in lay is for that vibrant color you can still find this in other types of materials so you have lays that have and i don't think this is bottle brush but i don't um jb what exactly red are red flowers are these those weren't those was just fuzzy material fringe fake materials like yeah. okay fake materials that's right so this is just uh fuzz <laughs> that people used um you can go to the next slide you can see on the on the horses of the puddle riders, they used bottle brush and they used red tea leaf and they used protea, red protea to get that red vibrant color. So those are all things, anthuriums, things like that. Um, the tropicals have very vibrant colors. Um, gingers sometimes can have really pretty bright, bright red colors. Or also if you scroll through the next one, we have a native shrub here called Aali'i and that's what you see as the red in this lay, for example. This is a really beautiful lay, Aali'i is a dryland shrub. And so um, you guys, we have that in all of our forests across the islands. And these are the seed pods, the red, the red colors, the seed pods. So when they're seeding, they're perfect for um, wreath making, lay making. And then last but not least, we have the bottle brush, which is our last um, uh, photograph. Um, and so, you know, uh, people can use bottle brush for that same look of the ohia. And so we're trying to encourage the utilization of alternatives. And we're also trying to encourage the utilization of what's in your yard. You know, there's a lot of things you can use out there. There's a lot of plants that may not be the typical lay material that you see out there but it still can be used in lay or wreath making or things like that. So there's a lot of even invasive species, for example, are, are some people can use in lay making. Like I've seen people use lantana, the flowers of lantana, for example, in lay making, and it came out really beautiful. Um, so, you know, there's uses to all these types of plants that you can utilize. Um, Kim, I think in the chat, if I'm not sure if you want to handle these questions or not, but um, there was a few questions, um, I'm guessing for you. I did answer one. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, so with that, if um, no one has any other questions, um, now we're gonna get started in the lay making uh, portion of, um, of uh, our workshop. So I know you folks have everything prepped or you are working to prep your materials. So um, Kim, if you could highlight my, um, my hands camera. So I have two cameras folks working. So we're, we're trying something new with our lay workshop. We're, we're learning everything, you know, as we go along. And um, so essentially uh, we got some good feedback from people filling out a survey as well. Um, so um, we decided to invest in a hand camera to make it easier for you folks to see our hands when we're making lay. So hopefully this works a lot better and you, are, um, and you can see my hands camera um, nice and clear. 
So today I was just going to go over the materials that I have and how we normally or how I sort this is I put it all on a tray on a sheet pan or something like that and keep them in little piles uh, to, so you don't have foliage all over the place. So today I have um, Ohina Hina, which is a native um, a shrub and it's got nice silvery green and silver leaves. So that makes a really pretty one. I have kupu kupu in which I had prepped these ferns. I have some hina hina, which are uh, which is like Pele's hair and they, it's like a like a Spanish moss, I think some people call it. Um, I had I scored on a nice bush down the road um, on some nice gardenias. They smell just so pretty. I I'm gonna use those, I think. Um, and I got some loa'e that I picked as well and prepped into um, my three to four inch uh, pieces. From the, I'm also making a lay today for someone for graduation, so that's why I have um, a couple of things from the from the uh, flower shop. So I have some baby's breath, um, and I have some roses, like I mentioned to you folks, in which I prepped um, to keep them from snapping. Um, and then I have these, and I. I don't know what they're called. Um, they're really cool though. They're like little like coral colored balls that come in different colors. I get them from the from the floral shop and I don't know the name of this particular plant. Um, I don't know if JB would know, but anyway, um, you can use them in arrangements and, and lay making and things like that. So I have some of that today for color. So um, that's what I have. So um, I wanna see just if you folks can pop in the chat box just maybe one or two of the plants that you folks are using today, um, whether it's roses or tea leaf um, or Song of India or um, who knows, everyone's using, is red a symbol of something? Red is not, I don't know if it's a symbol necessarily um, as it's tied to a lot of cultural significant things like Pele, our goddess of fire, her color is red. Um, um, Ohia plants, they're the color of red. I, I don't know if it's any significance in color, maybe Hoku would know, but, um, oh, Wendy, yes. Hypericum, yes, that's what they're called, these little balls. Um, Hypericum, thank you. Yes, and red of the lava and the volcano. Oh, we have some red pom-poms and maple leaves, nice. Oh, yes, yes. Also, feathers of all of our birds are red. We got some bottle brush, bougainvillea, very good. Palapalais, pohinahina, song of India, nice. And kupu kupu, akia, oh, awesome. Moa, oh, nice, Auntie Kathy. Score on the moa. Oh, how pretty. Awesome. It sounds like everyone has. Does anyone have anything that is not um, foliage? Maybe like, I think someone mentioned, I mean, do you have uh, alternatives? I forgot to mention, you can also like, um, I sometimes go to purchase um, flower materials like from Ben Franklin or something like that. So you can also use fake flowers as alternatives too. They're really vibrant and really colorful ones as well. Anyone using alternatives, plastic bags and gift wrapping? Yes, great. Cool. So we got some people, most, it looks like mostly everyone's using um, plants, plant material, but we do have some non-plant material as well. Okay, so to get started, you're going to take those three long pieces that, I'm, that I had you folks prep and get ready for. And um, what you're going to do, is you're going to line them all up. So you're going to line them all up at the top like this. So they're all lined up. And give yourself about six to eight inches of length, and you're gonna tie a knot right at that six to eight inch mark. So I'm gonna measure about eight inches here, and I'm gonna tie a knot. And the reason why you're gonna leave yourself that much room is because that's what you're gonna use to tie your lay at the end. That's gonna be your tying uh, material. So those three pieces, just like that, I created my knot right there at the eight inch mark, and I have the rest of it to um, that's gonna be my tail. So now comes comes style, and this is this is this is why lay is uh, the the art of lay making is an art is because everybody has their own style. Um, so you can utilize and do things and create a pattern. I suggest creating a pattern of some sort in your head before you get started on what you want to do. 
So generally, um, because this is where your knot is, this is where we're gonna start where the knot is. And um, generally that's the part where it's gonna be underneath and you're not really gonna see it. So um, I generally don't start with the flowers, for example, just because, I mean, unless I have a lot of flowers and I wanna make it strictly with just flowers, then I will start with the flowers. But normally I start with some sort of greenery first. Um, just or like some kind of filler, whatever filler you want to use, whether it's tea leaf or ferns or pohina hina or baby's breath or whatever it is as a filler. Um, so I'm generally going to start with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with lowai. And lowai is going to be similar. You're going to treat it similar to like tea leaf. So if you have tea leaf, this is going to be similar to what you're going to do. So you're going to look at your tea leaf or your lowai or whatever fern that looks about this, this length. Um, and there's gonna be a shiny side and there's gonna be a dull side. So the shiny side, what you wanna do is you want to, perfect, thank you. So with the shiny side, you're gonna flip it down to create, just kind of roll it. So you're gonna flip it over to, to the dull side facing up and you're just gonna roll the sides in to make a skinnier sphere like that. And I'm gonna place it right over my knot. And I'm going to roll another piece. So I'm going to flip it where the, the dull side is up. And I'm going to turn and roll one edge and roll one edge to make a small sphere. And I'm going to place it like this. So I don't, you don't have to follow me. You can do three. You can do just one. You can do your flower, um, anything like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your strings. And so say, um, Say they're all, you're, all your strings are even, right? So I guess before I get started, I'm sorry. With the strings, two of your strings are going to serve as your backbone, while one of your strings, I mean, while one of your strings is going to be your wrapping cord. Okay, so I'm sorry I got started prematurely there. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to have your two strings, and your one string is going to be your wrap. Okay, so I said I'm right-handed, so I'm holding my strings in my left hand. Okay, so it's your left hand that's gonna get cramped over time. So again, I'm going to take my leaves. I'm gonna place one in one direction and I'm gonna place one in the other direction. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna wrap from the back. You're gonna wrap over the front, over your leaves or over your flowers. You're gonna wrap towards the back again. So you just went in one complete circle and you're gonna cinch it off tight. Not super tight, but tight. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back and you're gonna do it again. You're gonna come from the back. You're gonna go over the front. You're gonna come to the back again to cinch it off a second time. And that's gonna be where you're gonna hold it tight. Okay? So I'm gonna do that again and I'm gonna show you one more time. So like you can see here, I have my leaves. There we go. I have my tip of my leaves and that's what's going to be shown. Everything down over here, don't worry about this stuff that's going to be down in your hands because that's you're going to be covering that as you make your lay. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to try again. I'm going to do a fern. I'm going to follow the same pattern but with a different I'm going to do a kupu kupu fern on one side and a kupu kupu fern on the other side. And you're going to take your wrapper from the back over the front to the back again, cinch tight. Then you're gonna go from the back to the front again, to the back again and cinch tight. So you're just going in a circle around your backbone. And by what I mean is your backbone is those two pieces of cord that you have that, that's gonna serve as your backbone. That, so that, pretend like that is one one cord instead of two just pretend like it's going to be one okay so that you're going to hold those together so what you're doing with that with that third wrap the wrapper cord is you're wrapping around that piece of yarn or a, around that piece of raffia okay so i'm going to try again i'm going to use baby's breath this time i'm going to use a little baby's breath okay so i'm going to place it there again to where i can have my baby's breath and i'm going to go from the back to the front around to the back again and cinch tight. You don't have to go really tight on the first one, but cinch tight. <clears throat> then you're gonna go from the back to the front and to the back again. 
and on the second one, cinch really tight. And make sure to, so with tea leaf or with lawai, with things that might crackle, like so if you're using tea leaf, if you're hearing some cracking going on, that's okay because that's gonna happen because those leaves are not soft, right? Their, their cells are still uh, very strong in there and they're, and they're fresh. Uh, so you wanna, you want to cinch tight, but not cinch like to the hardest that you can go because that might rip your leaves and your leaves might fall out. So you have to have a, I don't wanna say like a fine touch, but you wanna cinch tight where it's tight and it's held but not cinch so tight where you're cutting it off and, and it's gonna fall out. Okay, so if you, sometimes you might, you might lose a, a leaf or two and then you'll know what I'm talking about if you're, if, you, if you're encountering that. So now I'm gonna put a flower here. So I'm gonna put a gardenia because I wanna use my gardenias because they're so pretty smelling. So I'm gonna put one because I'm gonna make a small one today. You can put two flowers, you can put whatever you want. So what you want to do is you want to go from the back and make sure you don't get the petals in there to the front, to the back again. Cinch tight. Then from the front to the back on the second wrap and cinch and go to the back again and cinch tight. Okay, so we got started with a, what is this? Four, four rounds of wrapping I got down. So I'm going to continue to go and I'm going to continue to repeat myself so you guys get it. And so if there's any, okay, so what do you mean by cinch tight? So um, Mindy, what I mean is if you were to take, um, so if you watch how I'm holding it, I take my, my index finger and I push against the, the backbone or the plants and, I, and with the other four fingers, I, I pull it tight tight into my into my hand. So it's kind of hard to see because I got a flower. So let me see if I can uh, put another piece in there and and show you again. So I'm gonna, I'm using low A again because I'm going back to my this is going to be my pattern. So I'm going to do two ferns, a baby's breath and a flower. And I'm going to continue that pattern. Two ferns, a baby's breath and a flower and two ferns, baby's breath and a flower. So that's my pattern that I'm choosing. It could be any 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 pattern that you folks choose. Um, so with that again, with your leaves, whether it's tea leaf or lowae, you're going to keep the dull side up and roll it. So the shiny side is facing up and you're going to place one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with another leaf. Roll and roll. I'm gonna place it right there. And I'm gonna go from the while it's tight, I'm gonna go from the back to the front, to the back again, cinch, cinch once, from the back to the front, to the back again. Okay, so as you folks are wrapping, you wanna keep in mind that you want to try to go over your last wrap on one of the wraps, and then you wanna wrap right below, right below, so you're going, so you're going, you're working your way down the backbone. So I'm going to show you the back. My I don't have very much in my lay right now, but I'm going to show you how my back, the back of mine looks. So do you see how there's no spacing? Where is it? There we go. Do you see how there's no spacing um, in the back? That's kind of what you want to target because you want to go over your over your last wrap while going um, beyond your last wrap as well. So you're going down the backbone. So like, just like I'm traveling down the backbone and you wanna make sure you, you try to keep that spacing tight um, because that's what's gonna keep your lay from falling apart. So if your hands are starting to cramp because it could possibly be cramping by now, um, especially for me, since I'm holding it with my left hand, it might be my left hand's gonna get cramped over time. And so um, this is where a chip tip would come in. So I don't, I'm not cramped right now, but I'm gonna show you in case you do wanna take a break, just chip. Put your chip clip right at that, right at that junction, just like that, or your tape, and you can tape it down to your your desk, and just just so it's held tight. Okay, so if you want, that's how you use your chip clip. I'm gonna continue um, because I'm not cramped yet, so I'm gonna continue. I just did my lowae, so now I'm gonna do my kuku kuku. 
So let me know if you folks have any questions. Feel free to share your screens if you want. Share your screens so people can see what you're doing or you, or you can show us. Um, if you have any questions and you don't want to free your hands and don't want to write in the chat box, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. But if not, I'm going to continue keep, to keep going down. So I'm going to wrap from the back to the front to the back again. Cinch tight one round. Do it again from the back to the front to the back again. Cinch tight the second round. Okay. So now I'm on to my baby's breath. Again, from the back to the front, to the back, cinch once. From the back to the front, to the back, cinch down twice. So you want to do at least two reps, um, two reps, uh, as you're working your way down, you know, per thing you're adding in. You can add in one single leaf at a time. You can add in two leaves, like I'm doing one on each end, so it's staggered. Um, you could do one flower, two flowers, if they're small flowers, um, whatever you whatever you folks feel is your pattern that you want to keep. So I'm going to continue going through my pattern. So I got my Lawa'i leaf. Hey, Amber, I am yeah. running out of my wrapper. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. So let me, so, so perfect timing. Thank you, Kim. Um, I'm, so when you're running out of your wrapper, which is the probably where uh, some people are right now. So let me just tie this one off really quick so I can show you folks what to do to add in another wrapper. Okay. So I'm going to cinch this tight before I add in my wrapper. Okay, so say my wrapper is, I'm going to cut it just to replicate a short one. Okay, so say I got this, this is left. Oh no, I'm running out. I don't have any more wrapping string. What do I do? Okay, so what you want to do is you want to grab another one of your strings, whether it's your yarn or your raffia, um, whatever you're using to wrap, you're going to grab a fourth piece. And you're going to, so what you're going to do, get that fourth piece ready. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this tail, this end tail that you're, you're wrapping forward, your ending tail, and you're going to fold it towards the front and you're going to place your thumb over it and you're going to bend the tail down facing your backbone. So it's going to be, it's going to merge with your backbone. Okay. So you're going to, I'll do it again. You're going to come from, from the back. You're going to. Um, wrap towards the front, put your thumb over it right at the front where you're holding everything else and place that backbone, I mean, place that down to be part of your backbone. Okay, everyone got that so far? With your fourth piece, your, your piece that you're adding in, what you're going to do is you're going to get it, you're going to match that tail that you just put down. So you're going to take your new piece and you're going to you're going to be facing it towards you, facing it down, and you're going to put it right under your thumb to, to align with that other piece that you just had. From there, as you're holding it tight, you're going to go above your fingers. So my the tip of my finger is right here. You're going to go above your finger and wrap. You're going to wrap once. Same way, going from the front to the back. Come around, cinch. You're going to wrap again twice. And this time, go a little bit over that wrap while going past it. And you're going to cinch it a third time. So, what you're doing is you're wrapping over that junction. So, you can see where you, where you merged your pieces. And you want to wrap this part really tight because this is where you're merging your pieces together. Um, just to make a mention that this is just one style of lay making. People make lays in many different styles and many different ways and, and doing different things. Some people, um, instead of merging it like I do, um, some people tie it, tie one end of the string to a, just a longer piece and just continue that way. You can always do that if you don't feel this is tight enough for you or if you don't 
get this, you can do it that way. Um, I've seen people even braid their backbone to make it thicker as a backbone. So there's all sorts of ways you can learn. And as you take different courses and workshops, you'll learn people make them differently. So this is just one style. Okay, so I wrapped it three times to merge my piece. And now I have a whole brand new long wrapper. And then what you do is you just keep continuing. So I'm gonna continue with my kuku kuku. I'm just gonna continue going down my backbone. So wrap from the back to the front, to the back again, cinch once, then from the back to the front, to the back again, cinch twice. So how is everyone doing? I hope everyone's getting it. If you're not getting it, please put yourself on unmute and ask some questions so we can get you up to speed. Because I know it's difficult to learn when you're watching a camera and you're not really in person doing it. So I get it. I know it's not the easiest thing to learn from. Um, so if I'm not saying things correctly or if, you, if it's unclear, please let me know so I can um, correct that and we can, we can work from there. So again, I'm adding in my baby's breath. I'm gonna go from the back to the front, to the back again, cinch, cinch once, from the front to the back, to the front again, and back again, cinch twice. And now I'm gonna add in my flower. So same thing with the flower, it's a little thicker of a stem. Um, I'm sure um, whatever, whatever flower you're using is probably going to have a sticker, a thicker stem than maybe the leaves. So you're going to do that. You're just going to wrap in the same manner, um, but you're going to make sure that you're, you're, you're um, holding it tight. Okay, so from the front to the back, cinch once. From the front to the back, cinch twice. And as you go along and you're, and you're working your lay down and down and down, it's going to start to curve on you. Okay. And so if it's starting to curve, don't worry. It's that's what's supposed to happen as you wind. Um, this style is called wheelie, a wheelie style, meaning winding style. So um, it, it will start to curve on you. So don't worry about that if that's what's happening. Um, it's it's going to happen. Your hands are going to cramp. And that's um, if your hand is cramping, that means it's a good sign. That means you're holding it tight enough because you want to make sure to hold your plant material tight enough and wrap tight enough. Because if you don't, when you wear it, um, you know, it might just fall apart on you if you're not wrapping tight enough. And I know it's hard to see how tight to wrap it if, if you know, if we're not in person, but hopefully um, as you go along, you can kind of visualize um, how that works. Hey, hey, Amber, I'm gonna remove your spotlight for a second and I'm gonna do um, gallery view because I just wanna see, um, get an idea on how people are doing. If you would hold up what you've got done thus far to the camera so we could get an idea. Sandy, gorgeous, you're, you've got the hang of it. You're making lots of, okay, Mindy just did a thumbs down. So we might wanna talk more okay. with Mindy. Terry's looks beautiful, Nancy's looks beautiful, Emily beautiful, Christine. Mary looks like she's got some interesting lay material she's using. Kathy, I didn't think that I saw yours. I wasn't looking at the right and perfect time. Oh, good. So it looks like most everybody's kind of getting it. So Mindy, do you want to um, ask any questions? I'm going to just also say that Amber talks about wrapping um, around the back to the front. I'm left-handed. I wrap from the front to the back because that just feels more natural to me. And you know what? Either one works. It's whatever feels most natural to you. So um, if there's a particular part that you're maybe having, struggling with not getting, let us know. Yeah, or Kim, maybe, do you think maybe showing that video of the up close of my hand, finding it? Um, well, I think- the Presentation? Let's hear from Mindy first. Yeah. you show the back as when you're tying, could you like tie it and show what's happening in the back of the thing? Yeah, for sure. You mean when she's wrapping, right? Yeah, Not tying. Okay. 
let me yeah. let me spotlight um thank you her again so you can see it nice and big so i'll spotlight amber's hands there you go amber so you heard the question right so right here mindy i'm starting from the back and i'm going to wrap from the back over the front to the back and then you can see you see where i'm at in the back i'm sorry there you go there Back. Can you move your, your hands a little so that we can see more of your back? I don't know if you're going to have to move your hands to the right or the left, but let's try. Sorry. I don't know if you can see your camera. We can't, your hands are going off the edge of the camera. Yeah. Okay. A little more, please, the direction you just moved. Just there we go. Oh. So, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. There, and now we can see that. Does that help, Mindy? Yes, thank you. So that's so just could you wrap it as you're going? So you're just wrapping it. Right. Yeah, she just wraps it, winds it, wheelie, wrap it around. There, exactly. That's a good one. You're breaking up, Amber, for some reason, and we're losing your hand off screen again there. Again, your voice is breaking up. Something's happening with your audio. Um, and micro PC, I don't know what your name is, but yes, um, <laughs> she's using plastic grocery bags as her material, which, um, yeah, put those plastic grocery bags to good use. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're Mary. Okay. Hey, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, they seem to be working well for practicing. Not pretty, but practical for practicing. That's a great idea. Use something. Yeah. No, don't go for like the most beautiful thing to start with. Just do a few. Um, the more of these you do, the more it starts to make sense. Like my first one when we were doing these last year was, yeah, it felt, it kept falling apart. Like I'm like, it, they're not staying in there. So mm -hmm. practice makes perfect like with anything. So Mindy, are you, are you getting the wrap yet? Did you put yourself on unmute? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Could you also demonstrate again the um, when you add the string or that? Give me one second. Let me get up scissors. So I'm gonna cut my rope because mine is mine is um, long, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, merge another piece. In here. Amber, there's something happening with your audio. Is your microphone by chance? Um, obstructed in some way oh. huh weird because your sound muted and you're breaking up a little bit and it was not happening before hmm is anybody else having that difficulty hearing amber yes yeah okay let me try again it's not maybe i can switch my uh, audio to my phone audio yep there you okay. go okay let's put this first so if i breaking up you're still breaking up some. So yeah, why don't you try switching audio from your computer to your phone? Okay, give me one second, guys. I'm gonna flip this off so I can use my yeah. hand to change this up. Give me one second. And then I'm gonna mute your other... Uh, Uh-oh, I don't know if that's gonna work. Yeah, now we're getting I'm sorry, folks. I hope, I don't know what to do about the breaking up. It might be better. It might be just by turning it on and off something is Re it better now? It seems like it's better. Okay, okay. Let me try. Well, it seems better. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mindy, so if you watch, um, sorry, I'm gonna take off my my chip clip. So I have a little piece like this, right? That's your your the end of your uh, wrapping cord. So what you're gonna do is you're going to um, take your wrapping cord, which is facing, the, it's coming out from the back, and you're going to wrap. 
let me try to get a better angle on this. You're gonna wrap in the front and you're gonna put it right under your thumb, just like that. And you're gonna bend that piece down to match your backbone. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna come from the back and you're just gonna put it right under your thumb, right where you've been holding the whole time under your thumb. And you're going to just put it under your thumb and hold it tight and bend it down to face the rest of your backbone because that's gonna be part of your backbone now because we don't waste any material, right? So you're gonna hold it under your thumb, get your new piece of material, um, your new cordage. And what you're gonna do with that end piece, like I have here, is you're gonna face it in that same direction as that tail just went. So face it down or towards you. And you're gonna put it right under your thumb, right with that same piece that you just bent down. So my thumb is holding the old piece and the new piece. Right, so these are the two little straggly edges that came out of those two pieces, right? So they're facing down towards my backbone with the two long strips. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go above your hand. So I'm gonna try, if you if you watch Mindy, you're gonna, um, you're going to wrap to where my finger is, the edge of my nail right here. You're gonna wrap above it. So you're wrapping over, probably over your last wraps, right? You're gonna wrap over that, go from the front to the back, and you're gonna wrap cinch tight. And you're gonna go over that wrap while you're going over and while you're going down at the same time. And you're gonna cinch it twice. And every time I do a merge like this, I do it three times just because I'm a little weary that it's gonna come loose. So I'm gonna wrap it for the third wrap. So from the front, like this, there you go, from the front to the back for the third time and cinch tight. And so you're gonna hold your thumb here and use your index and your and your your um, the rest of your hands here to cinch it tight. Okay, and so now you should have your backbone, which is the two long original pieces. And then you have two little scraggly pieces because you just added in the piece two scraggly pieces facing down. And then now you have your new, your new wrapping cord to use. So all the while, what you wanna do is keep your hand over, over um, where, you, where you're placing your foliage or your materials. You wanna always keep that thumb tight, that thumb with your index finger is holding it together, okay? So again, the back of my lay, what it's looking like is like this. I'm I'm wrapping over each other, maybe not as tight as this area, but I'm wrapping as I'm going down the back of them. Oh, sorry. Hard to see. There you go. So it's looking like that in the back. Okay, so I'm gonna continue um, my pattern. So Mindy, if you don't, if, if that doesn't work for you, what some people do is they use the end and they tie another piece to it. You can do that as well, but make sure your knots don't come loose. If, if you end up knotting it together, that's another way to do it that I've seen people do as well, um, just to continue the length of it. Um, you can do it that way. Um, just, just note that if you tie the two ends together, sometimes they, they can come loose. And so just make sure your knot is, is really good and tight if you wanna do it that way. If, if this way that I showed you doesn't work, you can try that way as well. Are there any other questions? Um, it sounds like, I mean, it seems like everyone's doing good and and getting their um, getting it down. It seemed like I looked at a bunch of the a bunch of yours. It looks really beautiful. I hope it smells just as beautiful as my house smells right now. So from the front and the back to the front. To the back again once, then from the back to the front, wrap again twice. Hoku, um, it is uh, not Hoku. I'm sorry, uh, Amber. It's eleven ten. Just giving you a time check, and also wanting to remind you to talk about. And this might be something we can talk about while we're finishing. Um, 
like how to take care of our lay once, you know, like if we're going to making it for today to wear tomorrow. Um, and then also if you would move your hand with your lay in it uh, under the, yeah, and we're losing it off the screen. I know, I keep having to, sorry about that, guys. It's tricky, yeah. <laughs> it's tricky to watch my hands and try to watch two cameras at the same time, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, so care, how to care for your lay. What you wanna do after you're done with this and after I show you folks how to end it and tie it off and all that sort of thing is um, you wanna keep it cool and in a damp place, whether it's in the refrigerator or whether it's in the cooler on the top of the ice, if you're gonna to go to a party or something like that. Um, so what I like to do is, that's why I mentioned in the beginning that maybe you might need a spray bottle like this. And what I do is I just mist it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you right now. I'm just misting mine right now. And that keeps it cool and damp. And like you know, plants love the forest, right? And they love it cool and damp. And that's what that's how they're gonna succeed is because you've already picked them. So they're you know in the process of dying at the moment. So you want to prolong that. So um you can keep it if you don't have a spritzer, you can just kind of run, just take some water from the faucet and run it over a little bit. And or you can um get a damp paper towel or a damp rag, um, wet it and damp it and wrap your lay in it. That that way you can wrap your lay in it and keep it cool and damp and i suggest in the refrigerator so if you're going to use it depending what type of flowers you're using um is depend is going to be dependent on how long the lay is going to last but if you keep it in the refrigerator it should last a while you know it should last a while so so i'm sure all of you are getting to a pretty decent length so i'm going to finish up my my one um pattern and i'm going to show you folks um, in a little bit, how to end it. So these coupe or this this length of lay that we're teaching you, you can do it longer if you want to make one for your full head. Or these are nice on your wrist or in your hair. So like me, I'm wearing my hair in a bun right now. So I'm gonna put it in a bun um, to to wear. I'm gonna put it on my hair. Um, so that's perfect for that to wrap your bun in. So you can wear it either way, or you can make it long. Is anyone making lays for someone for graduation this weekend? Because I know there's a lot of graduation um, people graduating this weekend and next this whole month actually I think is the whole graduation month. Um, so hopefully, if you guys are making lays for them. So um, Amber Mary has a comment that she shared. My lays backbone seems to need a chiropractor. It's suddenly crooked. By that I mean my plastic bag foliage seems to suddenly move to the left yeah so sometimes, on that. sometimes mary as you're going um what i like to do so mine's just twisting a little too and what i like to do is just kind of hold it from the back and just retwist it just retwist it back to, to align straight and it should i mean i don't i'm sorry that um <laughs> um that I'm um, I haven't used a, a plastic bag before, so I don't know how that material is is exactly winding, but I know when mine winds, um, I just bend it back, uh, just take the back bone like like this and just re-bend it back. Um, I guess like a chiropractor would do. I don't know if that would work in your case with the plastic bag, um, but maybe try and give that a try. Wrap from the when that's happened before to me, what I've done is I just unwrap um, until I get back to that bend and then I, I start over. Yeah, you can always- If it's a dramatic one, like I feel like Mary's talking about. The natural curve, you know, is good. It, JB seems to have a corkscrew situation going on. Um, uh, JB, why don't you hold it up to your camera? Let's see what we're talking about. Wait, I can't see JB. Try again. Yeah, let me try again without the um, background. The it's just the tension of the lay makes it go. The tension of the weaving makes it go round and round. Yeah, it does. So you can just try to like un um just wind it back to make it straight. I would suggest. And when you wear it, you're gonna wear it around your head or something. Like it'll you can um try to rearrange it because I mine does that too, and I don't know if 
um, there's any way to stop it from winding, you know, because as you're winding, it's winding. It's just, it's just the tension you're doing, I think, <laughs> by winding it. it Unless you were to reverse. I mean, if you went this and then that and that, I don't know. So mine also came out with a flat back because if I pulled it tight, it snapped the tea leaf. So this is just tea leaf bits. So if I pulled them tight, it snapped the tea leaf off. So I, I just left them kind of flat folded. So yeah, got this flat back on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder too if it's the uh, the amount of material that you're using, like the denser, the tighter, the more impact with different materials. You know, if that helps create the natural arch versus the spiraling. But you know, we learn over time, right? What's the good material to use and yeah, what we like. Okay, I'm almost running out of my cord where I'm going to show you guys how to end it. Okay, so just give me a few, a, a few more wraps and then I'll show you how to end your lay. And it's pretty simple, the ending part. You can do it in many different ways as well, like I mentioned. But let me wrap a few more and I'll show you how to end it. So you want to end when your wrapper is about six inches or so, at least give yourself six to eight inches to, to end it. Okay, so I'm at the end of mine, or I'm about to finish mine. Okay, so let me, um, uh, Kim, can you highlight my hands again, please? Oh, oh thank you. Perfect. Okay. So I have a good, you know, six inches or so. I'm going to, there we go. So what you're going to do to end it is we're going to tie it off. And how you're going to tie it off is you're going to kind of grab your, grab your, uh, your tail or your wrapping cord, and you're going to um, put your hand and make a loop and loop it back under. So you're facing the other direction. So your, so your tail is now facing out. If, I, if you're right-handed like I am, it's gonna be facing towards the left. So let's do it again, I'm gonna show you. So all I did was, it's on the right-hand side for me now. And what I did is I just made a loop and I went back under through the back, on the back side, like that. Okay, so on one side I have a loop and on one side I have a tail. So the loop, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to go through the loop. You're going to just use that loop as one tail, and you're going to take the tail from the other side, and you're going to tie it off. And when you tie it off, you want to tie it really tight because that's going to be your ending, and that's going to be your cinch. Okay? So I'm going to tie this, and I'm going to, re I'm going to put another string in there. I'm going to show you how to tie it again in case you didn't catch it. Give me one sec. Let me tie this one off. So I'm going to add in just quickly a small little piece to just show you. Um, I'm going to pretend mine didn't end. And I'm going to. I'm going to just make this really quick to show you guys again. So you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for a visualization and a demonstration but I'm making pretend this is gonna be my wrapping cord so I can show you one more time how to end it. Okay, so pretend this is my wrapping cord, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a loop. You're gonna loop it, make a loop, and go back under, face, and then put the, this, this uh, end tail underneath. So you have a tail on one end, and you have a loop on the other end. Okay, so the so it went under. I'll show you one more time. I'm gonna make a loop and go back underneath. So on one side, you're gonna have a, a loop, and on one side, you're gonna have a tail. Okay, hopefully everybody gets that. And what you're gonna do with that, you're gonna take that loop and just use it as one string 
and you're going to take the tail from the other side and you're going to come around the front and you're just going to tie it off. And you want to tie it really tight, to cinch it really tight. Okay, and you're going to double knot or triple knot it if you want. So I'm going to double knot again. Okay, so now what you can do is you can trim, you can trim those pieces off if you want. And your, so your piece is going to look like this is the end. And so what you want to do with the ending part is cut a good, make it, make it even with, um, with your other piece. So make it a good six to eight inches, however, however much you have in the front that you use as one end of your wrapping cord, just cut it evenly. So my lay is right here and I'm just gonna cut it right here. So you have your um, your lay, your coupe like this, or actually, um, Kim, do you, would you mind spotlighting just my face now? So I can show it upwards. Perfect. So what you're going to have is you're going to have your coupe like this, and you're going to have two ends that are going to be used as your tying cords. So what you're going to do is you can tie it on your wrist like this, Oops. your wrist like this. You can wear it on your wrist, or you can wear it in your hair like this. So I'm going to put mine on my hair, on my bun. It's hard to see you like that, but um, it'll look like this. You can put it in your hair. Um, you can put it up. Um, if you wanted to make one longer to go around your whole head, you would just continue that same style, but just make it longer to where it reaches your whole head in the back. There we go. You know, so it would go all the way around and it would make a full one. Okay, so does anyone need me to demonstrate how to finish it off again? So with that, before we get into our survey, if everybody can put their cameras on, we want to take a, a class photo. <laughs> we want to take a class photo with everyone. We want to see everyone's lays or, or whatever materials you used. And we're going to get a photo of everybody. So let's see, Kim is going to change the view, I think, and change the view. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Wendy, you made a long one. Wow, that was so fast. Mindy, came out nice. Sandy, very pretty. Oh, Christine, lovely. Nice to see plants that are not from Hawaii. Oh, the paper bag, I mean, the plastic bags. Mary, looks really good. All right, hold up your lays. Let's get a photo. Perfect. I think Kim, if you're- I got a bunch, that's good, Amber. Okay, great. So with that, I'm gonna spritz mine, like I was mentioning, I'm gonna spritz it and make sure it's nice and damp to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, with that, so before you folks head out, if you folks wouldn't mind just filling out, just taking a, a quick three minutes or so to fill out a survey for us, let me get the link. I'm gonna put the link in the chat box. Let me bring it in the chat box. So I just put a link in the chat box. If you folks can click on that link and head to our survey, I think it's about, I don't know, eight or 10 questions, maybe fairly quick questions. It's gonna help us to improve our workshops. Let me know if you folks are having any trouble accessing it. Um, hopefully not, but if you folks uh, have any trouble, we can, figure that out. And with that, um, as you folks are doing that, we just want to thank you very, very much for sharing this space with us today. It's always so fun to do lay making. We can't wait till it can be in person one day. But with that, at least um, we still get to get together and do things collectively and share knowledge with each other and do something fun and something productive. Um, and hopefully you folks have learned some sort of lifelong skill. Um, 
<laughs> or practice at least makes perfect. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mary. So we will stay on. Um, if you folks have any questions that you would like to ask, feel free to, you know, um, unmute or anything like that. And don't forget our next laymaking lay workshop, so you can practice again, is Friday, May 28th. So you do need to sign up for that one. Just because you're signed up for this one doesn't automatically enroll you. You need to sign up for each of these individually. So if you want to join us again, so Friday. And will that be a different style playmaking? No, this is going to be the same style the next round. Um, but I think we're going to do some more workshops to teach a different style as well. So just keep an eye out for it. However you folks heard, whether it's our newsletter or any of our emails or social media, keep an eye out for that. We are going to probably host more play workshops. Um, do, you have, so. do you have the link handy, Amber, for people to sign up for the 28th? Um, let me let me go get it. And when you're done, I did just put in the box in the chat box for our next workshop. If you'd like to join us again to practice some more, um, it will still be the same uh, style, but at least you can come back and um, and practice more with us if you'd like. <laughs>